All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. And uh, today we'll be doing three reviews uh, for for the games of uh, of players uh, online. So this these are not my games. These are mostly played by players between the level of two Q to one Dan. And uh, we will examine their games a bit, and uh, hopefully we learn something. Uh, you know from them and uh, and about their mistakes uh, so I will be focusing on the early games uh, for this uh, review so I picked three games so let's get started the first one is a 2q versus 1q so um, they open up with you know a double uh, double star versus a star in the 3-4 and uh, played out a standard Joseki that's excellent um, and white goes for 3-3, three, three. Uh, that's a uh, Joseki I also talked about. So if you haven't checked my Joseki um, series, you can go ahead and check Joseki series. There are about 20 videos, uh, a bit more than 20 videos, uh, and talk, uh, you know, uh, introducing all kinds of popular Josekis these days. You can use very easily to handle your early games. Uh, so at this point, this is a Joseki, and next move, black approaches at f17. Uh, this is an excellent move. Uh, not only uh, pressures uh, white's star point, but also builds on the top side. So white now defends uh, with the c14, uh, an alternative that I talked about a lot in my Joseki series is also you can defend yourself like this. Uh, to ensure yourself a larger corner um, and uh, and then later on you can look at potentially sliding to the second line invasion so uh, those are valid choices as well uh, what he played in the game is absolutely fine uh, black follows up with a traditional slide in uh, but if you are a fan of my Joseki series uh, maybe uh, this is this is what you would have played, right? This is more trendy and this is more popular, but I mean, uh, really, at our level, it doesn't make a, a difference. So, black slides in, and uh, white decides to play a honey here. So, th this is where I want to mention uh, a thing or two. So, um, the goal of black sliding in here uh, is that it, it's trying to get rid of the roots that white has here. Uh, so in in our early game, what we try to do uh, is to not create insecure groups on the board. When you have insecure groups on a board, um, you'll be under attack, and it's not pleasant to be under attack because p your opponent will be making profits here and there. Uh, they'll they'll build their moyos, their grab territory by attacking you. Uh, so here, the move that I would recommend uh, this particular player or viewers who are, are watching this game is to just defend at 3-3, right? Why don't we uh, stay patient and, um, you know, uh, get a root for ourselves? Uh, but also, this is a very big move uh, on self. So it's it's a lot of territory, and it, it's it's concerning the root of these two guys. So I think C17 would be an excellent move to play uh, in this uh, scenario. Uh, so this is not what is played in the game. So in the game, the player decided to play a honey uh, at Q18. Um, and then honey connected. So um, this could be a, a mistake uh, at this point um, because this is a little bit too early uh, to play honey connect. I think I understand I understand the concerns that this this player, you know, the, the player who's playing white has, is that, well, I think what he's worried about is, let's say he plays somewhere else, uh, he's probably worried that there is uh, this kind of stuff uh, that, you know, black can play to pressure the corner. Uh, but first of all, these are all covered in my uh, Joseki series. Uh, White can go ahead and defend himself uh, like this. So this is a Joseki uh, variation. Uh, White would have no problem um, defending it. Uh, and also in my Joseki series, I talk about the classical way to defend is to Atari first and then descend at R18, which in this case would be a very nice idea. Okay. So not only fix everything black can do here, but also it creates a leak uh, 
at p18. So this is uh, this is the standard way to follow up. If you want to play moves uh, in this local area, uh, so honey here is not a choice. So it is a mistake. Um, so try to not uh, play that in your future games if you you know play like this particular player in the game. Um, so yeah, I just said you know just to repeat myself, you know this is the way if you want to follow up as white. Uh, if you don't, that's also fine. You can just play somewhere else. Uh, if black um, you know plays anything like this, we can Atari first and then Atari. And then take uh, no problem. There's a cutting point. Black will fix immediately, and then and then we call it a day. Uh, white can go ahead and do something else. So, <coughs> sorry. Yeah, these are two ways that you can. Um, you know, these are the ways that your corner is going to be fine. So, but instead, uh, white honey connected, uh, which is a mistake. It's it's really slow. And now black extended, that's an excellent move, and then white has to keep going. Because if you play anywhere else, this turn is very painful. Uh, it's it's going to take your stone next in Sente, so very big move. White cannot allow that, so white pushes ahead, and now black goes into the 3-3. But this is also a problematic move. Actually, black has to absolutely uh, extend. Uh, he cannot let uh, white honey, and uh, which is a mistake that I see a lot in uh, in in the games online as well as uh, some of my students. They they um, they make this mistake. Uh, they just let their opponent honey here. Uh, the problem with letting your opponent honey uh, when you have two stones like this is first of all uh, the liberty here is super tight. Uh, now. With this honey, black uh, white achieved a lot of things. So white built his influence towards you know the the bottom side with with this uh, with these two guys. Um, but also blacks blacks influence is significantly reduced with this honey. Uh, on top of that, this is a sente. Now now black has to worry about these cutting points. The two cutting points. And black has to defend against them because otherwise, uh, you know, if you don't play anything, uh, white will immediately uh, drag out and fight. Uh, this is a very serious problem. Uh, there's a ladder here. There's another cutting point at P17. So black is collapsing here. But let's look if if black extended. Well, not only these two guys will never come out and try to do anything towards the bottom side. Uh, but also look at what's going on here, right? Around this area, is that black's black's influence is huge uh, towards uh, the left side. So R12 is not a move that you can miss, right? Because it's about influence towards both sides, and it's about your uh, thickness. Um, here we can see that white has no cut because uh, black can just uh, you know ladder the stones. So, uh, absolutely remember, do not let your opponent honey uh, when you have two stones like this. Um, I just want you to remember the shape, right? Do absolutely not allow your opponent to honey here. And if your opponent does not extend, absolutely honey there because uh, it's about influence uh, towards both sides and it's about the thickness of this wall. So, huge move. Uh, it's way bigger than uh, a small move like a 33 right now. Well, I mean, it's not even a small move, but it's this is a key move that you cannot miss. All right, so now white gets this. Immediately see uh, black place another move, and and is is that the actual game? One sec. Oh, actually, this is not what is played out. <laughs> this was my variation. All right, so. Um, yeah, this is what is played out. So white was worried about uh, his two groups, as we can see, because white did not grab the roots. White now has to play a move like this. I mean, that's the that's the consequences when you have a weak group, right? Now check. It's easy for black to play. Black can go ahead and uh, play a knight, and then this starts to become territory, and white is still not settled. 
uh, which is why you know if white just had the root before white never had to worry about this group anymore so I think I'll end my review for this game here uh, I think we learned two things one is the importance of uh, not having a insecure group on the board uh, when black slides in why don't we just defend grab the territory stay solid and stay alive uh, very important when you're alive you're able to invade the way you want uh, later on so uh, that's lesson one and then more importantly uh, this extension is absolutely a uh, must play move uh, because it's about influence on both sides and it's about the th you know thickness of this wall so you absolutely have to extend out uh, in these situations so let me show you a quick example uh, so it's like at this point black cannot tanuki right if you tanuki I honey up look at this this is this area becomes white's influence but also uh, the weakness you have here is exposed but also whatever you're trying to build here is significantly limited because i can just start to um, push you on this side uh, whatever you're going to build here i might just have my compensation back here right so so at this point uh, you have to absolutely extend out so those are two things. I hope you guys. Uh, I hope you guys uh, learn from this game. So let's move on to the next game. Uh, we're gonna leave this game and we're gonna look at game two. The game two is played by one uh, K versus one Dan. So I haven't checked their game uh, beforehand. So I'm gonna quickly uh, go through with you guys. Uh, very uh, standard stuff. Uh, everybody's playing this Joseki. That's very good and. Uh, and here, um, another option uh, for black instead of pincering is actually just uh, play out like this. Uh, very, very simple. Uh, very fast. Uh, grabbing two to corners and then uh, wait for white's uh, wait for white's action. Uh, instead, black black decided to uh, pincer, which is okay. Uh, white tanukis, uh, that is also okay. And um, they play out uh, a Joseki here and black, uh, okay, black extends. So here, uh, very important for you to remember to not extend. Uh, the correct move is actually Atari when your opponent plays the Tiger's Mouth. When white Ataris, we can just take white might Atari here or white might Atari here. So let's, it, either way, black will connect. And uh, when basically when white connects black will have to cut here uh so this is this is the variation to go um and uh this is this is a better variation for black actually so there's actually no way to ladder uh, the stone here because of this help so so white uh, will be in a very difficult situation actually um We'll have to, you know, play something like this or uh, something like this. Um, black is able to secure a lot of territory. So that's how black should have played out. Uh, but instead, uh, extending is not bad, but it's inaccurate. Uh, white is able to extend down on R18. So um, that's a very good shape for white. White has the S18. So if you pincer, uh, if white ever needs to just live, uh, this is this is very easy to to make uh, to make a life. So, which is why black should not have allowed uh, this extension. All right, so that's a little uh, little thing to remember. And now black kicks a very nice move, uh, getting rid of the roots. Uh, white extends out, but. Uh, here I'd recommend white uh, to actually tanuki here. Uh, if you're really worried about what's going on here, which you shouldn't, uh, you can you can uh, directly uh, invade here. Um, and now if black plays this one, we can just go ahead and uh, make a two space extension. Uh, not only um, secure ourselves, but also uh, put pressure on the black. Likely black is going to do uh, this and now white can extend out and uh, attach on top. So this would be a more normal bait, 
more normal way to uh, continue uh, for both sides. Uh, but extending out first, extending out first is a little bit dangerous because uh, because now when you okay let's see now when you play this one uh, black will come out so black should have come out um, more efficiently like this right this is putting more pressure on the way uh, black plays a kosumi okay that's inaccurate I, I believe black should have just jumped out here uh, and um, and white decides to run here. Um, okay, so that those are those are. Uh, I'm not too sure about these moves. So first of all, I think white should have pincered here. Uh, this would be putting more pressure under this stone, but also leaving a, a nice nice point at uh, s12. So if ever uh, black hops out, or in this case probably black kosumis. Uh, white can just push up and uh, uh, maybe something like this, right? So this will be a, a great way to um, to actually uh, keep going as white. So not so first of all, we're gonna attack uh, these guys, right? So once they once they start to run, uh, white has a very nice uh, a very nice way to connect back home. So there's there's still this. Uh, going on, white might not play it immediately, but uh, but later on, uh, white can think about this. Um, so that would be a more uh, a more interesting way to play, or more accurate way to play. Uh, so just remember, when you want to counter attack, uh, you usually want to look for a back door as well, because when black jumps, you still have this back door. But the place that white chose was this pincer. When black jumps, there's no backdoor because when you attach, I can uh, block your connection. Uh, if you cut like this, is uh, not going to work out at all. So, uh, so that's that's why choosing uh, your position is very very important, right? So here, if you if you choose R9 or if you choose R10, uh, makes a huge difference. Uh, R9 provides a backdoor for your group, but R10 doesn't. Uh, so so here um, yeah should have played R9. Okay so R10 was played uh, and uh, opponent did not jump. He plays a Kosumi, um, which is also slow because there's no there's no backdoor so Black could have jumped. Uh, White decides to um, come out this way. So this is already pretty difficult for White uh, because next. Yeah, black played very well, so black just sealed everything. Uh, white goes here, and then uh, black uh, plays another move, um, and white decides to fight. But but alre we already see this is a very difficult fight uh, for for white actually. So we can see that immediately uh, white is under a lot of uh, a lot of pressure um, so here maybe okay huh so here uh, tactically I think I think black made some mistakes right black should probably have just uh, played this one to prevent this cut here uh, because now this cut is a lot less uh, serious uh, because black can uh, defend himself like this um, but instead uh, when black connected here which is a mistake uh, white's cut is very very serious uh, and I think black is in trouble actually so there's some tactical uh, tactical mistakes that that um, both players made locally uh, but um, but my point is, uh, the reason why it got into that difficult situation to start with, you know, at this point is very difficult. Uh, white has to white has to live inside. Uh, you know, something like this probably is gonna live, but um, but then black is gonna start attacking uh, attacking this group, uh, and this is just not a pleasant game because white is getting attacked everywhere. 
Um, so, so I think uh, the problem is really uh, this this move here. When, when it allows black to play this one, maybe at this point, uh, boy should have hopped out first. Uh, at least, um, but but I, I don't know if there's already tactical uh, tactical problems going on here. Uh, probably uh, this is uh, um, white is in trouble. So um, so yeah, really, what I want you guys to learn is this um, is when you counterattack, think about your safety as well. Uh, this attacking leaves a back door. Uh, which is why, uh, you know, we, most people with pincer, you know, just one space. Uh, forcing black to prevent this, but as we can later see, uh, there's still uh, some Tetsuji uh, to get to get white home. So, uh, you know, you, you can verify by yourself that white is, uh, is home. So, um, no way to really, no way to really cut white off. So... Yeah, so two things that we learned. First thing is uh, tactical uh, local variation. Uh, we're just gonna uh, is is for you to absolutely Atari here at R uh, eighteen when your opponent plays this one. Always uh, go for the cut, right? Just remember in this shape, there's always a cut here. Uh, so go ahead and uh, always play out this variation instead of just. Um, just pull back at, at, like the player in the game. Because when white extend at R18, his shape is very flexible. He never has to worry about this group anymore. And the second thing that we learned is that, is that choosing the counter attack location. Uh, when, you, when you pick this one, always remember there's no back door for you. Black just need to jump out. Your group needs to run. When your group runs, hey check, this, this group gotta run. So you're running everywhere. Uh, that is why it is very important to choose this one. When black jumps, there is already some back door. Um, I can I can get myself back like this. Uh, this is no problem. Um, so that would be a much easier game for white moving on. So two things that we learned to be very, very useful. So hope you guys like this game as well. We'll quickly move on to the last game and see what are some of the things we can learn from there. So in this game, um, Black played a Chinese opening. Uh, not very seen these days, but it's perfectly fine. Uh, play whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, and this is a, a trick uh, that I talked about. So uh, go ahead and check, check, check out my uh, Evil Twin uh, uh, trick series. Um, it's, it's one of the videos. Um, where I talked about them, and um, uh, let's first see if the players have figured uh, figured out the trick. Uh, so I think Black has figured it out. So this is the correct way to counter uh, the trick. Uh, and now uh, White grabs the corner. Uh, Black ex uh, Black extends out, and the location is uh, also a problem. So we already see the location. Um, it's uh, that 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 is a problem among uh, players between 2q and 1q. Uh, so here I think a better location would be L3. Uh, why is that? Because when when white uh, attack uh, at N3, uh, black has a very nice Tsuji uh, to connect the two groups. So this is a useless attack. Uh, if you go on top, I connect underneath. There is no problem. If you go under, I can go on top, and uh, there's no way for these guys to escape. So basically, black is perfectly safe this way. But when you play this move, it's not perfectly safe anymore because white has a nice attacking point at M3 later on. Uh, so it's a good move, but it's not um, it's not completely safe. It's hard to manage. It's probably okay in the eyes of AI, but I mean, uh, for players uh, like us, it's 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 better to play things we understand. So played another few moves. Uh, these are okay moves. Um, black extend out, and white uh, white played very well. This is a very very well played move uh, because if white plays something else, uh, black might just uh, secure everything here. 
So before black can do that, uh, white goes ahead and start bullying uh, black's you know connection problem, forcing black to react here uh, when white connects. Uh, black now needs to worry about the connection of these two guys, which is why he played another move. So everything seems to be pretty okay right now. Um, black immediately takes the corner, and now as we can see already, uh, black when white hops in and attacks, we really wish black stone was in, at L3 because now this is a problem. Um, if ever uh, black gets split up into two groups, then black has to run. This group might be affected. This guy might just be under fierce attack. Um, it's very, very unsafe uh, at this point. But in the game, um, in the game, white decide to just play L3. But um, probably a better move is to just uh, honey here uh, and just uh, go for a fight like this. Uh, this is a very, uh, very nice fight for for white. Um, Let's look at their, um, you know, their tactical moves actually, uh, because there there are some problems with uh, with their moves. Uh, so so black uh, decides a cross cut, and okay, so so black should have probably just connected, um, and now if Y connects. Um, Maybe just start connecting everything. Um, but here, I think uh, both players did not play very well tactically. Uh, white takes a stone, black flip Atari. Uh, that's fine. And then black decided to seal uh, white inside. But the problem with this, this idea is that black has too many weaknesses outside. Uh, so even, even at this point, I don't even know what to do if... Uh, if white just cuts here, um, this is this is already very difficult, right? If white just cut, um, but they're probably more serious problems, uh, such as this one. Um, and now white uh, white cuts, and uh, black connects. So trying to hold everything, and then they they decide to fight a co. So that's very interesting. Um, I'm not going to comment too much on the tactical things, uh, but um, but yeah, so so it becomes a co, and uh, what happened is that white decides to use this area as the co threats. Um, white takes back, black connects, and white splits everything up. So this is uh, this is a very interesting outcome, which I think it's okay for both sides, and the game will keep going. But um, I think I think the um, the lesson that we're gonna learn today will be simple: is that uh, it's really the location for uh, for extension, right? So when you have you know a group like this, um, go ahead and play a three space extension. So that's that's a lot safer uh, because when we are safe, then we can go ahead and go to three space. Then we can go for a very aggressive invasion. Um, but when we are not safe, um, when we go for the invasion, we have to worry about the unsafe group, which make our invasion very, very dangerous. Uh, so that's a very important idea in the game of Go. When you have everything solid, then you can punch harder, right? So um, yeah, so if you every, every one of your group is alive, and then your opponent has a Moyo, you can just throw in a bomb and you can just invade. Uh, you can just attach. You can you can do all kinds of things you want because you have nothing else to worry about than your invasion group. So yeah, so this is uh, today's uh, review. Hope you guys like this kind of review where I, you know, mostly focus on early games. Uh, I might do another one uh, focusing on end game or middle game. Uh, whatever you, your suggestion, your thoughts, uh, please comment below video so I can make better videos uh, later on in the future. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and uh, thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you guys next time.